Hello, my name is Susana Frade and this is my presentation for the Golf Lab competition. The title of my presentation is Johann Sebastian Bach and the Lute. It's an analysis of Prelude from Prelude, Fugue and Allegro, BWV 1998. Johann Sebastian Bach uh, created an extensive output, mostly conditioned by the demands of patrons and employers. His seven works for Lud were composed over 30 years and were a result of his own interests. Toward the end of the Baroque period in the 18th century, the Lud was only cultivated in few German courts. With these works, Bach contributed to the late blossoming of the instrument and raised its repertoire. Today, I would like to talk about the prelude from Prelude Fingan Allegro BWV 1998, which is one of the seven lute works. I, as a classical guitar student, have wondered why Bach composed for lute, what inspired this work, what makes special this music, what made him compose for it, the performers of the times, the works of other lutenists, perhaps some special futures of the instrument. So if we know the context of the work and we analyze the music, we can understand better the music and give some insight about it and perhaps answer these questions. I believe that Bach's approach to the instrument made a remarkable contribution to its repertoire. To understand how this happened, I would like to go back in time to the early 17th century in Europe in the 17th century, there was an increasing interest in instrumental music and in the construction of the instruments as well. As a result, the relationship between builders and players benefited the output of these instruments. German, for example, built exotic types of stringed keyboard instruments like the lute hapschikor, a hapschikor whose undumped gut strings gave it a sound similar to the lute. Players and composers, in general, were able to experiment with new styles and techniques. However, during the Baroque, the lute began to lose status in comparison with strange instruments like the harpsichord. The lute, which was the, probably the most popular instrument of amateur players in the Renaissance by the 18th century, was almost only played by professional musicians. At the end of the Baroque, the lute was only cultivated in few German courts, and there were also made few compositions for it. Many of the lutenists who worked in small German courts were trained in France after the middle of the century. That is why a lot of the music written for German composers had a marked influence on the French music style. Johann Sebastian Bach came into scene and played an important role in the late blossoming of the instrument with these, the seven works for lute. The Prelude Fugue Allegro in E flat major BWV 1998, originally titled Prelude pour la Lute or Chambal, is one of these seven suites. Not in Baroque sonata form, with its typical four movements of slow, fast, slow, fast tempo, nor a standard Baroque suite with French dances like the rest of his lute works. This piece is sui generis in Bach's lute music and in the lute repertoire. It has a solemn character like that of the Sonata da Chiesa. The use of number three also reflects its religious connotations alluding to trini the Trinity. The piece, for instance, is the only lute works that present three movements. The prelude, the first movement, introduces a three-note rhythmic motif that will appear throughout the work. The second movement, fugue, has an arpeggiated middle section that leads to a reprise, which makes it a da capo fugue. This three-part structure is not common in Bach's lute music either. And finally, the last movement, Allegro, is a simple binary form and constitutes a lively, jig-like combination of the work. Now, to add a little context about this work specifically. The work is an original composition that belongs to the early 1740s and is now in the possession of the Ueno Gakuen College in Tokyo, Japan. 
original was comp composed in E flat major, uh, but it's commonly played in D major because of the open strings that gives more resonance to the instrument and also is easier the positions to play. The surviving manuscript of Bach's prelude Fingon Allegro includes French Baroque lute tablature, common practice in lute music, and double staff notation with the upper staff usually in treble clef and the lower in bass clef. And this notation is actually more often used in keyboard, not lute. The explanation of this double staff notation for lute music comes from the fact that in Bach's time the suites were occasionally played on the lute harpsichord that I mentioned before. In this indistinct use between lute and lute harpsichord uh, is illustrated by the autograph of the piece marked Pula Lute O Schembal. This historical evidence raises the question of whether some of the suites were really intended for the lute or only inspired by the instrument and actually intended for the keyboard. The lute harpsichord was a keyboard instrument that imitated the sound of the lute. This feature gave back the possibility to blend the versatility of the keyboard with the sonority of the lute. Thus, he could compose in this style without having to concern himself with the technical issues of the instrument. Unfortunately, there are no loop harpsichords tonight anymore, but we do know the connection Bach had with both instruments, the lute and the loop harpsichord. Uh, so here I show you some of the <clears throat> historical evidence from letters and reviews that appear in Bach's reader where you can see um, that Bach owned a lute, lute harpsichord and some references that he played and he composed for this instrument so we can see the connection. There is a letter from Bach's cousin mentioning that um, the famous lieutenants Weiss and Kropkans played for them at Bach's house. So we have, through this evidence, the contact um, that Bach had with the instrument and other composers for lute at the time. So now I would like to go uh, specifically and analyze the prelude. The alternative indication for lute harpsichord in the manuscript is not enough evidence that this work was not primarily intended for a lute. In the prelude, there is a stylistic imitation of the broken style, or style brisé. This term was used in the Baroque to denote the use of a broken, arpeggiated texture in music for plucked strange instruments, particularly the lute and the keyboard. The term is most commonly referred to as a 17th century French music, but its usage started with La Laurency, in 1928, who wrote about the style brisé of Gaultier. Composers like Gaultier imbued his dances with an asymmetry of phrasing and irregular rhythm, some of the features that define this style. So, in the prelude, we can see some of the features of this style, but more like an imitation. For example, the disjunct melody line features lips, but in a straightforward motion. Let's play the beginning. And so on. In the prelude, we have a defined bass line, which is pretty much static in the downbeats. It's a drop D. And a melody line that even with the lips is easy to follow through the music. We could consider the use of implied polyphony in the upper line, which will give us a more structured line within the polyphony than those in style brisé. On the other hand, in the French style, the lines are hard to find and follow through the piece because they were often written in French tablature, where the duration of the notes was not specified, as I mentioned before, and there is no continuity or independence in the lines. 
The next example is a piece for organ in style brise. We can see how there is no strict number of voices. Uh, in example two, we can see how it changes the number of lines indistinctively in almost every measure. In measure one, we can account for four lines. We can see two in the upper line stuff and two in the lower one. And then in measure two, there is only three. And in measure five, after the bar, there is only two. And also, we can see another feature of the style brise, which is the measure two, there is a seven, six chord broke down, which repeats the same notes in our arpeggiations. Another characteristic of the style brise is the octave changes within the melody. In Paschal Bell's music, there is an octave from the beginning in measure one, and that also occurs at the beginning of the prelude. Re, these octave slips are more structured in the prelude though, presented always at the beginning of the principal motif, and see how the first notes of measure one and measure six, so it's the same pattern always. And then measure six, and then later. The offset rhythms are another example of this style. We can see in example two, there is a regularity and variety in the rhythm. It's changing all the time. Every single measure has a different pattern with rhythm displacement, offbeat, syncopation, asymmetry in general. All the inbox word, there is an offbeat in measure one, but this pattern will repeat always at the beginning of the measures, creating balance and stability. During almost the entire piece, the rhythmical figuration is based on eight notes, we have to wait until measure 36 to have a different figuration. Thus, there is not such a rhythmical variety. Here, we can see measure 36, like the first time it changes the rhythm in the prelude. It does this. On the other side, another characteristic of this style is the asymmetrical development of phrases in both pieces. Nevertheless, in Bach's piece, it does not create in such a chaotic way like in Paschal Bell's piece. If we analyze the sections in the prelude, the first motive highlighted in green, in example one, comes back in an imitative way, repeating three entire measures almost exactly. And this will occur in measure 6, 14, 25, and 42. So every time it repeats this same pattern and so on. So the length of the sections is not the same. At times it takes longer to get to retake the motive. But we can still see a pattern since every time it goes back uh, to the main motive, it does it by repeating it exactly. In example five, there is highlighted using three eight notes the apparition of the motive. So this comparison I've made with Paschalbel's variation and Bach's prelude shows how both German composers approach differently the style reset but they still share some features of it. In Bach's music, the composition style imitates the style brise, but keeping it more conservatively and without portraying it completely. However, this approach reveals Bach's intention of recreate the sonority and the idiomatic style of the lute. On another attempt to understand what inspired Bach to compose this music for lute and to know better the musical context of the work, I would like to analyze now another prelude. This time is a prelude composed by another German composer, the lutenist contemporary with Bach, the lutenist Silvius Leopold Weiss. In Weiss' prelude, uh, we can see the texture of the music and how similar, it's amazing. It is with the texture used by Bach in this prelude. The use of the bass in the downbeat and the offbeat in the upper line are clear similarities in both preludes. So in Bach prelude, in the beginning again. Now 
Now see Vice Prelude. So the texture is pretty similar. These examples show us Bach's approach to the idiomatic style of the lute. On one hand, imitating the style brise, and on the other hand, imitating the musical style of lutenists like Weiss, with this alternation of bass and melody lines. Conclusions. The sources might be unreliable and or insufficient, so we still do not know if Bach actually played the lute or not. But we do know that he had contact with the instrument, that the lute was part of his context. We also know about his contact with the music for lute of his time, and that there was an active group of lutenists in and around Leipzig. He met and highly regarded the most important German lutenists and composers for lute at the time. He borrowed from different compositional styles without losing his distinctive print fact that enriched his music for lute. This made his prelude Figan Allegro, his sui generis composition, and also represented a new approach to the instrument. He contributed to expanding the idiomatic style of the lute and its literature, making the performers to overcome musical and technical challenges without no precedent in the history of the instrument. Now, the prelude. Thank you. 